Hockey Inside Out, brought to you by Videotron. Welcome to the HIO Show. I'm happy to be joined today by Mike Boone, our live blogger on HIO and columnist Jack Todd. Uh, Jack, we know uh, you're taking uh, the Canadians to win the, this series against the Bruins in seven games. Yeah, and uh, putting exactly this much money on it. Uh, <laughs> Mike, uh, what's your take? Who's going to win this series? I'm going with Boston. I think Boston's going to win the series in six games, and it could be five. I'm uh, at the risk of having my house vandalized. <laughs> I, I just think they're the better team. I think the President's Trophy means something. It's not like the old days when teams would play, you know, the Hartford artichokes eight times a year. It's a competitive <laughs> league. If you can amass the most teams in the league, I think you're the best team in the league. And my concern is with the Bruins and rough and tough play is who on the Canadians is going to stand up to them? I mean, Travis Moan, you coming back from a concussion. You got Brandon Prest, who either his shoulder or his rib you worry about. Uh, George Paros, you don't really want to see him fight anybody now. Uh, Jack, I guess the key for the Kings is going to be to stay away from the rough stuff. Then, if they're going yeah, to I think uh, I think they're going to have to. I mean, from the from the fisticuffs and all that, because all the, their fighters are pretty much held together with chewing gum and bailing wire, and you, you don't want to see them out there. Uh, the one guy I'd like to see out there just to drive the stats people crazy, if nothing else, would be uh, Murray because. Uh, they got him for a reason. This is the reason why they got him. Uh, if there's one guy out there that can stand up to any of the biggest Bruins, including Chera, it's Douglas Murray. So let's play him, see what he can do, at least for game one. With, with Chera, what do you do, Mike? Do you, do you run him, do you hit him, or do you just let the big giant sleep through the series? Oh, I quiet? think absolutely you let him sleep. I, I think as good as, as, as Chera under normal circumstances is, an angry Chera is really something scary. Um, unless, and, and you know, I'll, I'll contradict myself immediately by saying that Gallagher can get under his skin a little yeah. bit. No. Maybe by sneaking up through the bottom of his jersey or something. <laughs> and, you know, tickle him during scrums. I don't know. Have to be Flash innovative. that smile then, at him. Yes, that, 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 that yeah, maddening he, smile. Of he his. does mm -hmm. rattle occasionally. He does rattle. He, you know, for, for the dominant defenseman of his time, I, I think uh, he, he, he does lose it every now and then, and if he loses it, he loses it in a big way. You, you end up with chair in the penalty box for five minutes, and you're probably winning that game. So, I don't know. I go at him, and me, that's probably the guy I send. You know, send Gallagher out there, say bite him on the ankles, and see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. And it's interesting because Chara, throughout his career, but particularly laterally, has a problem with speed. You know, he can, yeah. he can get he can get torched yeah. under certain circumstances, yeah. and. Uh, and that, that might throw him off this game as well. He's not getting any younger. The thing with the Bruins have, it's not just the players, the rivalry, it's the yeah. fans. Even the media, Stephen Harris of the uh, the Boston Herald has described P.K. Subban as despicably villainous. You know, <laughs> do we need this crap? Uh, seriously, I, I mean, that that's amateur BS. I, I just hate to see that stuff. I'm not going to say that about Chera. And I, I think the, the Boston media should give the same respect to a guy like Subban. That's just silliness. Harris also says about uh, Emlin, he's saying he's a guy who's basically going out and trying to hurt people. I guess unlike uh, Milan Lucic, who seems to like to spear guys from behind between the legs. What are the odds you think we're going to see that happen in this series, Mike? I don't know. It's uh, well, he was fined what five thousand. Five grand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Is that twenty five hundred per testicle yeah, or what? Yeah, I mean, yeah. how do they figure these things out? Uh, well, if, if you're the Habs, you got to wonder if it's worth doing it to him and pay the five grand, take him out of the series. It might not be a bad. I, I said second cup should be sponsoring this series <laughs> because the Habs should all be wearing a second cup with Lucic on the ice. Uh, you know. It's a ludicrous penalty, though, for, for what he did. And this is, I, I blame the league, and at some point you go all the way back to Tim Lewicki and all the stuff that happened with taking Shanahan out of there, having our old friend Stefan Quintal having to hand out penalties, and he doesn't have the juice with the league or the experience to be thrown into that job in the playoffs. He was ludicrous on Lucic, not much better on Matt Cook, and that's, Lucic should be sitting out right now. Mm. And Cantel's in a horrible position in view of the whole Ron McLean French referee issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens yeah. if Cantel has to rule on on a francophone player, a member yeah. of the Canadians or something? Yeah. You know, he, then you can have McLean spot. suggesting that a francophone can't rule on a francophone, and the, uh, uh, yeah. it's, you know. it's crazy. Now, and no, look, I think McLean has learned his lesson. I yeah. think we'll hear more, more <laughs> from him for a while. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, it looks like there might be one roster change anyway. Uh, it looks like Michael Bourneval might sit and they'll bring in Travis Moan on the fourth line. Do you think this is a good idea, Mike? I do not. I, uh, I'm a big Bourneval fan. Again, I think one of their major um, assets against the Bruins is team speed, and Bourneval is one of the fastest kids on the team. I thought he was outstanding against Tampa Bay. But, you know, it is the playoffs. Coach Terrian is not the only coach that loves his veterans. And, uh, you know, Moan has a lot of experience. All the most recent experience against Boston was getting very, very dizzy after yeah. a fight with... Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that's got to be on his mind, too. I, I, I know Bordenaval once or twice in the Tampa series was caught kind of running around in his own zone, looked like he didn't know where he wanted to be. I'm sure that that didn't cost played him. in with Terry. Yeah. No, it didn't cost him. And, and the, the positives that he brings, the speed... Uh, I think he's a far more dangerous offensive threat than Moen is. I'd rather see the kid out there. I also think there's a little chemistry there with him and Daniel Briere. You figure he was a French Canadian kid who probably grew up watching Daniel Briere yeah, and maybe sure. idolizing him, and all of a sudden you find yourself on the same line. There definitely seems to be something there. And then with Dale Weiss going up and down uh, the wing, another good pickup by Bergevin, yeah. uh, like Mike Weaver. Yeah. Mike Weaver is plus 14 in 21 games with the Canadians. I don't think anybody expected this or even knew much about this guy, Mike, when he, when he came here. No, I mean, who knows anything about the Florida Panthers, really? <laughs> I mean, they're outside of our consciousness. It's a tribute to their pro scouting, which, you know, down the years has, has not always been the best, certainly under Pierre Gauthier, for whom it, that was considered his great forte, was pro yeah. scouting. But, uh, you know, they have a better department going now. He was a very key pickup, a right-handed shot, among mm -hmm. other things, mm -hmm. and, and a very steady player. Terrific pickup. You figure he's got to stay in the lineup. Now, Rene Bork, uh, Jack, looked like a different player in that last yeah. series. Yeah. Um, Mark Bergman was on Hockey Night in Canada saying that Scott Mellonby had a conversation with Bork. I think that just yeah. shows the power of, of the people Bergman has surrounded himself with. Yeah, you have, <clears throat> you have two kinds of people when they get into that GM's job. You have guys like Gauthier who keep all the power to themselves. Uh, I think are probably afraid to bring in anybody that might know something else, something they don't know, and eventually take their jobs. Bergevin has been completely the opposite, surrounding himself with people like Rick D Dudley and Mellonby. And if it's true that Mellonby is the one that talked to Burke, the Canadians might owe their fate in the playoffs to him because uh, Bork, Bork, when he's on, is just a monster, and when he's off, it's he's like a graduate of catatonic state who just cannot figure out where, what happened to him, how he vanishes like he does, or how he comes back like he does. But if they can keep Bork at the level that he played at in the Tampa series, I think that's one of the two keys for them. The other is Price versus Rask. Uh, if you look at their first round, they're about 60 points apart in save percentage. Uh, Carey is, I think, 904 and Rask goes 961. That has to be at least even, and I think probably Price has to outplay Rask for. Stick around, we'll be right way. back after a short break and we'll talk more Habs Bruins. Welcome back to the HIO Show. Like any playoff series, this is going to be a goaltending battle. We have Carey Price and Tuka Rask. Uh, Mike, are you confident that Carey Price is going to continue the play that we saw during the regular season going forward? I'm, I'm more confident than I would have been a year ago. Price did not have an outstanding playoff record, but I think he's had, he's had a very solid season. He's responded well to the coaching of Stefan Waite. He was great at the Olympics. Um, he, he seems to be playing better under pressure situations than he did earlier in his career. And Rask has issues with the Canadians. I, I looked up some stats. He is lifetime 3, 10, and 3, save percentage of 908, goals against average of 2.63, price by contrast against the Bruins. Everyone's still tuned in. Aren't these numbers fascinating? <laughs> uh, 17, 8, and 3, 919 save percentage, 2.50. Of course, you know, you, th you throw, after reciting them all, you throw out all the numbers in the playoffs. But the Canadians, they can get to rest. But, and, and, and Kerry, the best playoff series he ever played was against Boston. Yes. The seven-gamer he lost to yes. Tim Thomas, which just came down to a couple of a bad bounce for the Habs mm -hmm. and a good bounce for the Bruins. Yeah. He, he played Tim Thomas to a standstill. Uh, if he's that good, they're going to win this series. Well, in the two years since Michel Therrien has been back as Michel 2.0, uh, the Canadians are 6-2 and two against Boston, Jack. I think yeah. that says something about Michel Therrien's coaching ability, and maybe yeah. he knows something other coaches don't know about how to beat the Bruins. I know this will come as news to all the fancy stats boys out there who absolutely hate his guts, but Michel Therrien can coach hockey. Uh, he's there for a reason. He's done miracles with a few guys this season. His overall record since he came here these last two seasons is, is spectacularly good, given what he started with. 
And unlike a guy like John Tortorella, Michel Therrien can learn. He, he can change, he can learn with the times, he can see what he's done wrong and come back at his next incarnation and do better. I give him all the credit in the world. He's the right man for this job right now. You could make an argument that he outcoached Cooper in the Lightning Series. I mean, the Canadians no, went into that and they just it's dominated. It's a winning argument. And heading into it, you know, Cooper's yeah. a lawyer. Everybody thought he was the, 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 you know, the smartest coach yeah, in the yeah, Except room. the game was played at the Bell Center rather than in the courthouse. <laughs> 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 Oddly enough. <laughs> know, as long as you bring him up, there's something that, but I, I like Cooper. It's quite obvious when you see him in, the, in a press conference setting, all the media likes Cooper and everything. I really did not like what he did with the sc scrum with, uh, with Steven Stamkos. He, there were serious the questions yeah. being asked there. Stamkos, in my view, should not have played after the contact with Emelin's knee at all. He went staggering off the ice after, a two, after being down for two minutes. He, he should have been shut down for the balance of that series at least. And reporters were trying to ask him a question, and here Cooper comes with his water bottle playing reporter, making light of the whole thing. And I think it was deliberate. It was a way of taking attention away from, from the serious fact that, that he was taking risks with Stamkos himself. Mm -hmm. Didn't like that one bit. Heading into this series now, Mike, what do you think are the keys for the Canadians to beat Boston? Is there certain things that stick out in your mind? Uh, certainly price versus Rask mm -hmm. is the biggest key. I think the performance of Thomas Vanek and Max Pacioretty, I'll, I'll, I'll group them because they play on the same line. They're going to have to score yeah. for the Canadians to win. They, did, you know, they did not score against Tampa Bay. There was balanced production from the four lines. I think your big guys are going to have to show up in this series. And P.K. Subban. Yeah. Mm -hmm. P.K. Subban yeah. versus Brad Marchand is going to be worth the price of admission. I, I think Sub my money's on Subban in that. I think, oh, I, think I think people underestimate just how smart PK is. Yeah, and I think smart. he's smart enough. I think he's smarter than Brad Marchand. I think he'll yeah. be able to get under their skin as they go on. You're mentioning Vanek. Now Vanek's played 55 career games against the Bruins. He has 30 goals and 32 assists. Yeah. He just, I mean, he, I think he's going to be the the key yeah. in the series, Jack. Yeah. He did. He didn't have a spectacular series against Tampa. He had a decent series. Uh, he's capable of being spectacular. We've seen it pretty much since he got here. As a playmaker and as I, I think it may be his problem in the Tampa series all the way through, uh, was spending too much time trying to feed Pat Pacioretty. He's got to take his own opportunities mm -hmm. when he's there. But to me, he's the one, he's the one that turned this season around. And he's probably the reason I picked the Habs because his arrival created a whole chain with the lines. You know, dropping Gianta down created yeah. another really mm -hmm. strong offensive line. You throw one guy like that into a lineup, you're a different team. Well, as much as people criticize Michel Therrien for mixing and matching his lines all season, he seems to have got his four lines yeah. set now. And Mike, when was the last time the Habs could roll four lines, which is obviously a key going into the playoffs? I don't remember the last time they could mm -hmm. do that. But, you know, it's unfortunate that it took him maybe more than 82, yeah, yeah. You know, 83 or 84 yeah. games to get it going. <laughs> Um, getting back to Vanek, the, the two things that have impressed me about him, based on my limited knowledge of his career, you know, you knew he could score. He's not afraid of the, tr the rough traffic, no. and he's a hell of a passer. Yeah. He talked about, you know, trying to feed Pacioretty, which may have yeah. been overzealous in some instances, but man, that guy is a good passer. Yeah. I, that, that line is, uh, is fantastic. Best top line they've had in a long time, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. Now, yeah. Davey Dare and I also, Jack, seem to be a lot of pressure yeah. on him in Boston. I mean, I think he's another key to the series. Do you worry about him with the physicality in Boston? I don't worry about him at all. He's another guy He's built like Bouillon. You know, they're both about four foot seven and uh, 200 pounds and strong as little bulls. And any tall guy like me will tell you in, in sports, when you go against a short, really strong guy, they've got all the leverage. They're mm -hmm. underneath you. Even against the Chara or whoever is back there, he's hard to control, and and he's, he doesn't back down from anybody. He's not known as a tough guy, but no, I'm not worried at all about that, aren't I? And he'll be matched against Bergeron, who's not going to try to goon him. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that'll be a skill contest between those two lines, although Marchand versus, I don't know, would it be, I'm trying to visualize is it Pacioretty or Vanek that'll line up against Marshall. That, that'll be interesting. Yeah, it's, good. Um, it's going to be a heck of a series. Uh, everybody's looking forward to it. Uh, Jack, oh, you yeah. have the Habs and the, sorry, the Bruins and, uh, the Habs in seven. Yeah. Bruins and six. Bruins and six. I'm taking Bruins and six. I live in Boucherville, by the way. But, and, uh, <laughs> but like Jack, I wouldn't bet a lot of money. It wouldn't surprise me to see the Habs pull off an upset. We'll speak to you all again next week.